Before I start sewing the quilt together today, I want to show you how I set my sewing machine for the scant quarter inch seam allowance. In the back of the book of Pandora's box, you have all the diagrams of the shapes. And in those shapes, you'll see that the diagrams include a dashed line for the quarter inch seam allowance. What I want you to do is drop your presser foot so that the foot matches the outside edge of the diagram. So the edge of your foot matches the outside edge of your diagram. Then the dashed line, I want you to drop the needle on your sewing machine just on the outside edge of that uh, seam allowance so that you will be sewing with a scant quarter inch uh, seam allowance for all of your patchwork. It doesn't matter what the quilt is that you're making, it's the best seam allowance because that will make up for all the fabric used in your seam line. Now that we have that settled, let's go on to uh, sewing our triangles and diamonds together. The first unit that I want to make is I want to show you how to make this unit right here. This unit with the smallest diamond and smallest triangle, there are six of those in each one of the blocks and the next step is up above. So we have to have six of these for each block. Something else about this unit, when you look at it closely up here, it's best if the straight of grain is at the bottom edge of that triangle. So each time I pick them up, I try to remember that I want the straight edge here before I put it on top of the diamond. So we're going to match those two shapes perfectly right in here. When I sew this, before I sew the seam, I set an anchor cloth under the presser foot. And then I will sew to the edge of the anchor cloth. hold on to the fabric with my stiletto. Notice that I probably won't use hardly any pins at all when sewing this block. And I want to come right off here in the crevice. And we're going to chain, chain sew about three of these together to save time. We'll sew back onto the anchor cloth. There's our first two pieces that we have sewn. See that nice straight line right there? We'll finger press both on the right side or wrong side first and then the right side. The next piece that we're going to put on is right here. See where's the straight of grain? I want to have the straight of grain on the bottom part right here. When I match this this time See the ear down here is matched perfectly? That's how I know how to arrange it is that it mat this ear matches the one down below. Now that I have the points matched the way I want them, I'm ready to sew. And guide your fabric with the stiletto and your first stitches will be going right into the crevice of those two pieces. And when you look here, you'll see that I'll be coming right off in here where the two fabrics intersect. And then stitch off onto another anchor cloth.
When I use an anchor cloth like that, actually I save quite a bit of thread throughout all of my sewing uh, time. Not only do I save time, but I save thread. And I don't have all those messy little threads everywhere. See how nice that is? I now have the three pieces sewn together for the first unit that we need. And you would do six of those for each one of your blocks. Now that I have pressed those pieces, I want to know if I have passed my sewing test. So you take template in, lay it up on top, and as you can see, we have everything perfectly matched all the way around. Now the next thing I will do is remove those ears on all three sides. Then you'll also notice that the seam allowance or the quarter inch intersection from here to here is going to be just right for uh, when we connect our seams. Now going on to the next part of the step. Now that this unit is done, we need to sew these three units into the pattern. When you look at this, you'll see that there's something wrong with this block. This one has to be turned like this in order for the pattern to work. Another reason why you want to work on a design wall when you're putting your patchwork together. It's so easy to do it wrong. Next I'm going to put this one on top of the solid triangle, but I want to sew with this seam on top so that I have this intersection visible and I can see uh, where I want to sew. So we'll just line up the same the edges and really it's very easy because these are all the same size. Now that we've passed our sewing test, just guide up to the mach uh, machine. Now I want to go exactly over that point when I sew this seam and that one's already attached. See how nice that is? And that's much easier to get when you're sewing with that intersection on top. Again, take the time to press and we're ready to put the next one on. This time I want to put this one on top of here. Yep, like that. And this time this will match here and this corner will match the ear below. So now control it with your stiletto again. Onto the anchor cloth. And we'll finger press that one open. We'll put it back up here so that we have it exactly right. This one goes on there and right sides like that. You will love learning how to use the stiletto. You'll find that it's so much easier to use this than putting a lot of pins in all the time. You save a lot of time, actually. Now we'll press that one open. And look at how you have that intersection again at the bottom and all the way around that unit. You know, the, the fabric that you choose sometimes will, will give you ideas for the names of your quilts. But I knew when we flew into Jackson Hole to do the taping for this program, I knew that that was what I wanted to call this quilt. Uh, that was the Tetons, I mean. There we go. That looks really good. So now we'll put this right sides together and I want to sew with this one on top. Whoops.
go directly over that intersection press the seam open and I gotta get my finger in there though sometimes I have to use my stiletto to get it separated there we go always take the time to do that then we'll look make double check see this time we're kind of going in a different pattern so now this one goes on like this again matching up the point those ears I don't trim them off until afterwards because I use them as a guide so I know where to match for sewing so right into the crevice the stitch length that I've been using is a 2.5 which is about 12 stitches per inch you will have fun creating all kinds of different patterns uh, with Pandora's box using just your triangles and diamonds it's amazing all the different combinations of things you can put together okay there's that one no see this this diamond here goes towards the center so now this one has to go on like this I love sewing on this quattro it's great it's one of the brother machines on the market right now and it's really been fun to learn how to sew on this there that's the last one I have to put on when I get you after you've put that one on then we can connect the two halves together that's the end of the bottom of this block now after it's pressed you'll be ready to do the the next seam and see how nice that lays when it's been pressed so now what I'm going to do is put the top part on the bottom actually this is the part that would fit into the smaller quilt so if that was the version you wanted to make you would stop right there but this is for the bigger one you put these right sides together and I'll go over here so you can see exactly how I'm going to pin it go right through the intersection right here it's actually a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric through the top then into the bottom right here at that intersection and insert the pin and let that pin stand upright until you put the next pin in and then you have an ear at the beginning and an ear at the end and so in one quick seam we'll have one completed triangle got to get right over the top there you go now I'm anxious to see if I have a good intersection on the right side let's see what we have see how nice that looks and the last seam of this of this block will be pressed open first finger pressing and then take the time always to press with an iron and you have a nice block like that when you look at this you'll see that I have the top three rows already connected to each other and all I have left to do is to add this triangle here and we'll put this onto this row and then I'll add the last part of that row now when I put this one on I want to sew with this triangle on top of the uh, background triangle so we'll put that one on next and this is easy for matching because I will just match this corner up here it's a perfect match and we'll go off this end down here 
Remember, we want to sew exactly over this intersection right here. I wanted to sew right over that intersection and that intersection. And there it is. Beautifully, it's got nice, nice points on the right side. Now the last thing that I'm going to add is this end triangle. Remember when I cut that, I left an extra, uh, a quarter inch here in width when I was cutting it. And we'll put this right sides together, but this time I want to sew on this side so that I can sew directly over each of those points. Now this time you'll notice that there's a little bit of an ear hanging over here because that is your quarter inch seam allowance right there. This really is a beginner project. So if it's a pattern you like to would like to try, don't be afraid of tackling it because yes, you have two bias edges on the triangle, but everything is matched identical. You're, you're not dealing with two different shapes, which, make, which makes it so easy to do. Very nice. Now you have the points right there. The next thing now will be to connect this row to the top and to do that maybe I should check to make sure okay this is going to be matched up like this and then I will sew across each of these intersections but I will pin those together before I sew that seam to do that you want to pin right on this intersection right here through the top and through the bottom. That's your first one. Hold that in place with, with a pin. And now when I'm connecting the rows, I will use pins to hold everything in place. We have two areas left to pin and then we're ready to sew this seam. Very good. Okay, now we'll cut our thread. The, the machine has a automatic thread cutter on it, so when I got to the end there, I could just touch a button and we are all cut. We'll remove our anchor cloth. And we'll take a look at our finished wall quilt. We have a perfect point right there, all the way through. Everything is ready to go. So now what is left is to put the borders on the side. And what I like to do is measure both sides and make sure that they're equal. After it's pressed really good, I want to do that first. Press it, and then I'll measure the length of both sides. And then I'll cut the inside border the same, and I'll put that on first, and then I'll put the top and the bottom on. And then we'll continue on to add the outside border. And then you're finished. Oh, I know what. I wanted to tell you about quilting it. What I did on the, on the first quilt was I did diagonal quilting. I just laid the ruler on and crossed over from here to here. I made chalk marks. And then I did a, a cross hatching, so I went in both directions. Uh, very, very easy to quilt. Thank you so much for joining me today on Inspired by Shar.